brief story about a railroad that couldn't and didn't. Uh, we often come to these events and we talk about historical events that have happened. The his historical significance of this story may be that it didn't happen because how different our township landscape might have looked with a rail line running through the middle of it. So uh, with that, let me tell you what I know, which, well, I, I probably, there's probably more I don't know. But let's see how this goes. All right, we're talking 100, about almost 150 years ago, 1872, 73, uh, obviously post-Civil War, and if you put yourself 150 years back in time, the railroad was really king. You know, that was where people were going to make money. And as Joe mentioned, there was a railroad line plan to run from Boston to Harrisburg. So you will also hear this referred to as the South Mountain and Boston Railroad. This is a map that lays out the line, and I tried to, it, it's a little blurry. <coughs> Obviously, Boston, it was going to cut down through you know, bearings here, New York, a little bit of New Jersey was coming into Pennsylvania up around the Lee Heighton area, Palmerton area, and then it was going to come right down along the base of the mountain, almost as if it, when you drive to Allentown on, you know, 81 and then Interstate 78, that's kind of the line that this railroad was going to run on. This is a more local look. This is the 1875 map, and on this map, the rail line appears as that dotted line. So I have to tell you, you know, I've known about some of these things I'm going to talk about my whole life, but I never knew what they were until I grew up and started to read and started to put pieces together and then it started, I started to figure out what I was looking at. This is just another blow up. Basically it was going to come into Lower Paxton Township. Let me get your bearings. Obviously here's the square. You go out of Lingles Town to Parkway East, about a mile east of the square, Parkway East. There's a three-way stop, right where Caparoon's plant farm used to be. This is St. George Drive. So this thing was going to come into the township right out there. If you're familiar with that road, there's a nasty turn in that road. That's where it was going to hit our township. It was going to cut through the farm fields just north of Lingelstown. It was going to cross Blue Mountain Parkway. And then it was going to cross Lingelstown Road relatively close to where the new firehouse is. So if you can imagine, that was the rail line that they had laid out. There were stock certificates. This thing was funded by the purchase of, uh, you know, you bought shares of this thing. And in fact, I think Eric's got one over here and... Dave Doyle. Dave, oh, Dave. There's actually two original stock certificates over there if you wanted to see what they look like. But, uh, you know, this was the latest get-rich-quick scheme, and people were buying into it. You'll find, like, this one mentions John Ream. Uh, there was a Dr. William Smith in the Lingelstown area who, 150 years ago, put $40,000 up. That was a lot of money back then, and probably lost it all. So what happened in April of 1873, they started to do some excavations. They started to build up some track beds. Uh, there was some masonry work involved for drainage purposes. Area workers were involved. Benjamin Moyer was paid a dollar an hour for a plow and four mules to move land. This was all manual labor time, okay? Supposedly two miles of grading were, were started in the Lingelstown area, but they only worked for about three months. And then uh, something called the Great Panic Depression 
1873 set in, I think it was a financial calamity of some sort, that put the kibosh to the railroad. There were never any actual railroad, you know, rails installed. All that happened was three months worth of dirt moving, masonry work, and track bed building. However, for us, there's still, nearly 150 years later, these earthen works are still out there. Most of them you would walk right past and not even know what you were looking at. What's interesting, they were working in both directions. They were coming east and west, and they were going to meet in Lingelstown. And like I said, there's raised track beds. You can tell where they excavated the side of hillsides, and there are these stone drainage tunnels. So let me give you an idea of some of the things that are still out there. This is standing at that three-way stop sign on Parkway East and St. George, looking north on Parkway East. If you drive on that road, what you never realized was halfway up that hill, you were driving over part of the train bed. Halfway up that hill, there's about a 15-foot spot where it levels off, and then it starts up again. That level spot is where the track bed was at. <laughs> You've probably driven past this many times and didn't even realize what you were looking at. And this really is hard to see, but you can see the excavated rail bed through the side of this hill. This picture is from the townships in 1965, 67 anniversary? Yeah, Lingelstown 65. 67 was the township. This is from the townships 1967 commemorative book. And they had a picture of this rail bed. And really all you can see is you're kind of, you, you can see the curvature of the land here. This is what it looks like today. It, it's almost unchanged in the last 50 years from when that other picture was taken. Here they built a, uh, an elevated rail bed. I'm not a railroad expert like Donnie Goss over here, but generally I think railroads travel on a fairly flat plain. Okay? You don't see a lot of railroad tracks going steep up mountains. So what, what they were accomplishing here, the prop picture I showed you where they had to excavate the hillside. Here they had to build up to keep it on the same level plain. My hunch is the dirt from the prior slide I showed you ended up here. <coughs> the snow actually helps to give you some relief, but you can see the nice flat top of this berm. And if you were walking through this field, you would think it was just a natural land feature. It's not. This is the end. I mentioned they were working in two directions. So there's two elevated rail beds like that. Never got, they never got together, but both ends, you can tell where they stopped working. And for a history nut like me, you know, I look at that and that, that is history frozen in time. <laughs> that, that's where they stopped working, probably because they weren't getting paid. But you can tell, this is where they were working. This is where they were hauling the dirt to and dumping it and building this hill up. In both of these uh, rail beds where they built up, this is in an area that's pretty wet. A lot of drainage coming down through this area. So what they constructed were two masonry drainage tunnels through these rail beds. And I can tell you from personal experience, you know, they're roughly two and a half feet high, two feet wide. They're big enough for a 12-year-old boy to get through. I can tell you that. Why? <laughs> I've been there. <laughs> yeah. So, and, and just if you look at some of the stones, you know, these are massive rocks. These are not field stones. These are quarried, man-killer rocks. I mean, these things fall on you, you're gone. 
So they've made these tunnels that are probably 50 feet long through these rail beds. And it's all nice masonry work. You know, everything's squared off. What you're seeing here is the effects of erosion over 150 years. They're, it's taken a toll on these things. They're starting to collapse. This is the same tunnel. This picture's about four years ago. That was last week. So you can see the ends of these tunnels as the, as the soil starts to erode from around it it's starting to cave in. You know, this pile of rocks laying here was probably once part of the tunnel. And they go clean through. That's the other side of it. You know, so even to this day, you, they're still functioning. The water is still running through these tunnels. They're exactly where they needed to be. That's just to show you that's the far end of it, and other than that, it doesn't give you much. There's another rail bed. Like I said, you can walk right past this stuff and never see it. There's another tunnel right where that arrow is. And if, if you got up close, that's what it would look like. And again, you can see through to the other end. You get a little further west of what I've been doing here. I've been traveling east to west. You now you get over behind Blue Meadow Farms neighborhood. And if you you can see here where they had to excavate to again to keep that level plain, if you stand there you'll see the ditch going straight out towards Jacobs Avenue. It's been used as a uh, trash dump for decades, I think, because there's a lot, of, a lot of garbage in this ditch. So all I want to, you know, just all this stuff is on private property. So you got to respect that. The good news is I have obtained permission from a number of property owners for us to actually do a hike. And I'm scheduling that for Saturday, April 6th at 10 o'clock. And I have permission to lead a group onto these properties and see these features. You'll need to sign a liability waiver, which is normal anymore. Uh, it's not a long tour. It probably will take about an hour. It's fairly flat land, but it will be wet and muddy. So uh, I'll mention this again at our April meeting. But if you want to actually see these things close and personal, I can get you on it and you can go see them. I'm just curious, how many of you think you might be interested in seeing these? Okay. It's one of those things where I want a decent turnout, but I can't handle 100 people. Because <laughs> I don't know how I'm going to get 100 people through some of the places we got to go to. But, you know. 20 people or so would be a nice crowd. So anyway, that's that's the South Mountain Railroad as I know it. I, I think there was work going on along this entire line. Um, I think there are some ditch artifacts in West Hanover Township. This thing would have cut across the farm where they had the Linglestown Fair. So that's where it would have been going through there. Uh, friend of mine that lived out in the Jonestown area, he thinks there's some remnants of this type of work out there. So my gut is there was work going on, not just in Linglestown, but probably along this entire corridor, you know, heading out towards the Allentown area. Uh, that's about all I know. Does anyone have any questions or have any additional information? And like I said, yes ma'am. It was starting in Boston, and it was going to come right down through our area to Harrisburg. Okay, but they started in Allentown to come this way? I think they were working all the way along the, the line, is what, is what my gut is. You know. It started from Boston. But 
Yeah, but for Lingle's, I think they were work, using local workers because, I mean, this was back, like I said, in mule, this was all hand manual labor. There was no power equipment involved in moving those rocks or digging the dirt. What was the reason that they stopped? There was a, fi a, a financial calamity, the Great Panic of 1873, whatever that was. But it, it must have been not a stock market crash, but some kind of financial crash that created a financial issue. And what, what I've heard otherwise is this, this line was competing with the line that runs from Harrisburg through Rutherford to Hershey and Lebanon. And I, what I've read is that once that line was completed, there was no need for a second line running east and west. To our area. There was quite a few states involved in this. Yeah, this, this cut through Massachusetts, uh, New York, New Jersey, Pennsylvania. Yeah. If you were looking at it from the point of Boston, what, what part of it was finished? Or was any part of it finished? I honestly don't know. I, I, I don't know. Part of the right of way later became the Lehigh and New England Railroad. Mm, there's a nugget. Thank you. They, they say no track was ever laid on any part of the South Mountain Railroad. Uh, they, they dug the, the, the uh, cutouts like Bob showed, but uh, I read the same thing he did, and uh, they never really laid any track. In fact, they didn't own any engines. They owned a couple cars, but no engines. <laughs> Massachusetts or New York? Yes, yes, there was. It, it was the, the funds were bought out of bankruptcy sales by other railroads, and part of it in, in Pennsylvania and New Jersey, they laid track on the grade that became the Lehigh and New England mm. Railroad. Um, when, when did connected what? with the New Haven Railroad at uh, Maybrook. And what year was that, roughly? Uh, yeah, late 1800s, and they went out of, uh, they went bankrupt in the uh, late 1960s then. Thank you, that's good information. Anybody else? This is an aerial picture. Yes, sir. I do have a book on the Lehigh and the New England River. I actually have it out in my car if you want I can bring it in. They do have a segment on the South Park. Oh, South perfect. <laughs> It's great. Thank you. This is just an area I was really going to just tell you when we do the hike, where we're going to meet. This is Parkway East. In fact, the orphanage that we talked about at the last meeting was right here. Okay? This is Parkway East. At that three-way stop sign, there's an empty field there. If it's not too wet, we'll park in the field. If it's wet, we'll park along the road. And then what I'm going to show you, I don't have a pointer. Where's this thing got a pointer? Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. yeah, what I'm going to show you is roughly in this area. Right along the tree line. Right along that tree line. In fact, most of it's in the trees. So, yes? Um, I can vouch for Bob on this. My husband and I went on a prior tour with him of the same area. Very interesting. Mm -hmm. It is lengthy, and if it's mud, you know, wear boots. Mm -hmm. Take your cell phone, if it has a camera, take pictures. Gorgeous, gorgeous scenery the whole way along. Yeah, it's, it's, it's better to see it in person. You know, I can't do it and quite Bob justice. Does a pretty good job. <laughs> you know, but... Uh, That's it, Joe.